It's not as good as last month. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton. I am your humble narrator and welcome back to another bundle banter. Woohoo! <laughs> humble bundle returns with the December humble choice bundle. It's looking pretty nice if I do say so myself. More middling games than good games, but uh, very few poor games in my opinion. So I'm really liking what they put together and the mix is also relatively good between the genres for the most part. Anyways, without any further delay, we are going to go ahead, look at what this bundle offers, and then we will talk about each of the games individually. So in this bundle, we've got Overcooked 2, Children of Morda, One Step from Eden, The Beast Inside, Indivisible, Shining Resonance Refrain, Zwai the Argus Adventure, Zwai the Ilvard Insurrection, Tabletop Playground, The Frog Detective 1, The Haunted Island, the Frog Detective 2, The Case of the Invisible Wizard, Still There, Struggling, and Path of Giants. Overall, a really, really nice bundle. There were some surprises in here for me, stuff that I didn't think that I would like at all and ended up liking immensely. So, without any further delay, we will uncover the mystery and talk about each of the games individually. Overcooked 2. I never completed this game. Why? Because the final boss is a gigantic meatball monster and it makes my two-year-old cry. I have no idea why that is, but every time he sees it on screen, he starts fucking shaking and crying. Like having a literal panic attack. <laughs> Other than that idiosyncrasy, I really do enjoy this game. It's got nice music, it's got adorable visuals, it's got clever levels and frantic action, which really only reaches its peak when you're playing with a co-op partner. And this will cause you and your co-op partner to bond hard. You will either learn to communicate or die trying. Honestly, I can't play it for longer than two or three hours without initiating a fight with my nine-year-old daughter or my darling wife, but that just proves the hypothesis that you need to have a plan and talk it through while playing. Prep food, serve food, wash dishes. Really, it's a fantastic experience if you have someone willing to try and fuck their brain into your brain, but the online servers are fairly vacant, so you will need to have a friend at your house in order to truly enjoy this game. But if you have someone willing to join you for the adventure, there there's nothing else like it, honestly. Children of Morda. Well, I guess I'm going to eat my words from November's Humble Choice Bundle. I absolutely laid in the crying sons for trying to include a story in their roguelite. And then, in Waltz's Children of Morda, to give me a lesson on emotional storytelling right in the middle of an action RPG roguelike. The story is fantastic, but the greatness does not stop there. Beautiful graphics, engaging gameplay, plenty of unlockables to keep you coming back for more. There's really not that much to complain about here, if anything at all. Okay. I mean, the bosses do seem a little bit spongy, but they're bosses. You're supposed to beat the shit out of them for a long while, right? This game gave me a massive Hades vibe, which is strange since Hades released a year later than this game, but I still experienced Hades before Children of Morta. So comparing the two, I guess that Hades would have the edge visually, but I like the story in Children of Morta much more. As for the gameplay, they are both equally amazing. Play them both as soon as possible. This bundle is off to a very strong start. One Step from Eden. Deck building roguelike? Good. I love Slay the Spire. Oh, and you need quick reaction times in order to succeed at it. Well, that throws a monkey wrench into things. While I respect this game for having its own spin, I found myself longing to just swap over and play Slay the Spire. I play my deck building games to just kick back and relax. And in One Step from Eden, you're going to be memorizing different symbols to quickly determine which card does what in the heat of combat. I'll be honest and say, my frontal cortex doesn't really have any more room for this type of crap. After playing One Step from Eden, I've completely forgotten how to speak French. And also, all memories of ever speaking French. The only French words I remember after playing Step from Eden are shit and fuck. Thanks a lot, One Step from Eden. But I digress. Overall, it will probably appeal to people who are into the Mega Man Battle Network games, but honestly I think I would have had a lot more fun if I had time during my turn to learn what card does what. 
Instead, you're just like, random shit, go do something. <laughs> and it doesn't turn out well for me. I'm sure if I put the time in, I could memorize it and get through it pretty easy, but I'm just not willing to do that at this point in my life. <laughs> the Beast Inside. Thriller and survival horror. No crafting to be seen. So how do you possibly survive without crafting things? Well, you run. A lot. If you thought Five Nights at Freddy's was a jump scare simulator, you ain't seen nothing yet. Okay, okay, maybe that's a bit harsh. The Beast Inside is much deeper than Five Nights at Freddy's, and honestly finding new equipment to search out paranormal activity is decent fun, but the one thing that is most important in horror games is the atmosphere. And the atmosphere isn't done particularly well here in my opinion. I speak the truth to you when I say that there are far too many jump scares. The game leaves very little time to just let the tension build and doesn't really ever bother to fake the player out. They just go for the strategy of fraying your nerves as much and as often as possible, and it loses its punch exceedingly quick. The sound work and the puzzles are passable, but the execution just left me sorely wanting. However, take all this with a grain of salt, as horror games have never really been my thing. As far as this bundle goes, The Beast Inside is the most poorly done game of them all. Which is a pretty good thing, because it's not a complete piece of shit. I just personally didn't enjoy it. Indivisible, an RPG platformer from the creators of Skullgirls. Do I really need to say anything else? I gave a hearty nod of approval to Overcooked and Children of Morta, but this is the pinnacle of graphical gorgiosity out of every other game in this bundle. The fact that it came from the creators of Skullgirls probably should have made that instantly obvious. The game controls equally wonderfully with its easy to learn hard to master movement. It isn't lightning quick, but everything does feel put together just right. There are plenty of secrets to find, but the game didn't really reach the pinnacle of gaming that it could have been, should have been, due to some internal conflicts with the developers. There are a couple of characters in the starting screen that never appear in the actual game which lets me know that some content was probably cut. I really do enjoy Indivisible, and I would probably peg it as my absolute favorite entry in this bundle, head and shoulders above just about everything else. Obviously my love for RPGs and platforming have a big influence on that statement, but I'll stand behind it 100%. Shining Resonance Refrain. Hack and slash JRPG, what could possibly go wrong? Well. Let's start with what went right, shall we? This port is fucking flawless, and it makes the action RPG hack and slash feel quick and fun. The combat is relatively easy to pick up and play, but it also has some depth and feels rewarding, which is good because you'll be fighting things. A lot. As you do in a JRPG. Of course, it also has a lot of shortcomings, such as the extremely trope-filled and generic story, I guess you can't really blame poor story on the JRPG genre, even if that tends to happen a lot, so I will just chalk up another casualty for lazy writing. There are also a lot of quality of life failings for a game that released in 2014. It just doesn't make much sense to me. 2014 saw Dark Souls, Far Cry 4, Divinity Original Sin, and all of those games have fast travel, so I know we had already accepted fast travel as a good thing at this point. But for some reason, Shining Resonance Refrain just decided to forego that completely. Remember when I said that you'd be fighting things a lot? Well, this is a large reason why. At least, I guess you can date some NPC characters to distract you from the slog. It's a relatively decent game if you like JRPGs, but ah, uh, some quality of life changes would have taken it a lot further. <sighs> Sad. Zwei, the Argus Adventure. Another JRPG. Man, we were having such a nice range of games this month. I really do like JRPGs, but I can imagine people that don't have the same tastes being a little less than thrilled by seeing two Zwei games in this bundle. Heh, <laughs> two Zwei games. Zwei is two in German. Maybe that makes this a GRPG. No, it doesn't, is the short answer. And the longer answer is, hell no, that was just a joke, okay? Anywho... 
Zwei does have a really likable art style and some nice music, but again, you can definitely feel the quality of life additions lacking in things like the UI and the interface. Also, you get no graphic settings. The game still looks decent, even in 4K, but my brain says that what I'm looking at is a game that's 720p or so. It doesn't actually break anything, except for my heart. <laughs> While well, the gameplay holds up fairly well, the story is, again, lackluster, but in a different way, as Zwei tries a bit too hard to inject its own brand of humor in the form of stale memes. None of these JRPGs are really great examples of what the genre truly has to offer when it's at its peak, but they're okay. Zwei the Ilvard Insurrection. Oh, uh, another one. We're still talking about this. Well, okay. If you insist... A lot of the same problems and complaints from the original game carry over here. It is nice that the dungeons are a bit more coherent in this title. Still not fantastic, but at least a little bit better. The story also feels like it's trying a little bit harder in all the right ways instead of simply trying to be low so random. It also lacks some quality of life changes, but for a game this old, okay. I won't hesitate to say that it holds up kinda decently. I certainly wouldn't try handing this thing to anyone who wasn't already into the genre, as it's definitely not going to change anybody's minds about it. But if you are an old school gamer who can get into the grind and just enjoy the ride, then Zwei can do the job. It doesn't excel at doing the job, but it's passable at the very least. I expect more from my JRPGs. Maybe that's why they included three of them. If you stack Shining Resonance Refrain and the two Zwei games together, they're almost as good as Children of Morta or Indivisible. <laughs> Tabletop Playground! Hey! Tabletop Simulator Clone. Okay, maybe that's overstating things. Let's see. Tabletop Simulator is a wacky game that lets you play a huge variety of board games with just enough jank to make them feel kind of silly. It's great for a couple hours, but... If you're looking for longer, more serious sessions, then Tabletop Playground is the one for you. I've talked a lot about quality of life so far in this bundle, and I'm happy to say that Tabletop Playground actually does boast more quality of life additions than Tabletop Simulator. Have you ever picked up a chess piece in Tabletop Sim, only to drop the fucking thing halfway across the room, or knock over half the other chess pieces on the board while you're trying to make the move? Well, with the click of a button in Tabletop Playground, you can return the piece exactly back to where it was. It's a simple change, and it does seem minuscule, but when two games are so similar, you really do tend to notice even the tiniest changes. Overall, I'd say Tabletop Playground holds a lot more promise than Tabletop Simulator ever did, the only sticking point with that being that the novelty of this sort of game has worn off. Online play is happening now because of the bundle, but I'll bet you if you give it a month or two, it'll probably be a ghost town. Still, if you've got a few friends that are willing to play, you can have some pretty good sessions with Tabletop Playground, I do think. Frog Detective 1, The Haunted Island. I vaguely remember reviewing Frog Detective for a bundle, I think I'm fanatical, but it doesn't really seem like it left much of an impression with me either way. It's a short detective game that's really too simple to engage my brain in any way. It has a nice art style and dialogue that tries its best to be humorous with limited success. There isn't a ton that I have to say about this one, honestly. I might sit down my kids with it and just give them something to fiddle with, but other than that, I really doubt that I'll be playing through this one a third time. I do enjoy hearing my two-year-old point out which anthropomorphic animals are what, and reading the dialogue to my giggling nine-year-old is definitely appreciated, but uh, it's just not the sort of game that's going to click for the majority of gamers out there in my estimation. It feels kind of a lot like brain mush. Not much substance, but it might make you crack a smile or give your hands something to do for an hour or so. That's about the best that I can say for it, honestly. Frog Detective 2, The Case of the Invisible Wizard. Yep. It's the frog detective again, but this time there's also a wizard, and the wizard is invisible. You'll stroll, you'll smirk, you'll exhale slightly through your nose. At this point, you'll probably wonder what the purpose of the game is, and to you, sir, 
I would pose the same question about life itself. Aren't we all here just to make the best of the cards we've been dealt? And the cards we've been dealt this month are a couple of inoffensive games about a frog doing detective work. It's not the worst game I've ever played. It's just more of a comforting warm gruel to fill your brain with innocuous mush. And if that's what you're looking for, then hell yeah, play Frog Detective. One and two. Play him again. Get all the achievements. Whatever. But again, I think that most people will get through this game in an hour or two if they play it at all and never look back. I count myself among them. Still there. You know what I usually say about point and clicks? I hate point and clicks. But still there is the exception to this rule. I dreaded what I would find on startup as I did with most point and clicks. But then I realized that this is much more like a balls to the wall puzzle or strategy game. It pulls no punches and twisted my brain up in ways that it hasn't been bent since I tried my hand at Black Hole. I think what I really dislike about point and clicks is the monotony, but still there presents puzzles that don't give your brain a chance to rest. You will sit there and stare and draw your own little diagrams and paint with possible solutions, only to discover that you're still off the mark. This is the kind of game that absolutely wrinkles your brain. You probably need to sleep between puzzles in order to really let it absorb and find the answer. I'm always excited to encounter a game that follows me even as I slowly drift away to sleep. Honestly, Still There isn't for everyone, and that's okay. But those that enjoy puzzles will feel like big brainy boys after figuring out the absolute brain busters that are presented here. I might only complete one puzzle a day, but <laughs> god damn, it's a hell of a puzzle. Struggling. Ah, shit, man. Another kind of co-op game? Well, you can play it single player, and it feels exactly like Heave Ho. Struggling has themes that are a hell of a lot darker than Overcooked 2, but I'll be damned if I don't kind of love it. The controls are not as tight as Heave Ho, unfortunately, but the aesthetic really just captures me for some reason. Maybe it's because it finally delivers the halfway horror atmosphere that I was so desperately seeking from the beast inside. The name of the game, Struggling, is quite fitting, as you'll struggle to do even the most basic things. But you know, I enjoy a dash of jank in my games every now and then. While Heave Ho is the sort of game with tight controls that will allow you to be a master if you practice enough, you'll never get that sort of satisfaction in struggling, which strangely enough seems to fit the game's theme. Part of me truly thinks that the developers knew exactly what they were doing with the name and the horror theme. Either that, or it all fell together through kismet to create a game that is a poignant statement on life as a human, rather than, you know, just being a fun game for everybody to enjoy. I definitely don't like games as art, <laughs> but this one seems to deliver nicely. Either that, or I am reading way too much into things. <laughs> Path of Giants, an indie puzzler that has a lot to offer. Ice levels are only right above water levels when it comes to my level of annoyance in video games. And luckily, Path of Giants picks up the ice cool aesthetic without any of the annoying slippy slidey bullshit. In this game, you will control three adventurers and guide them through a series of extremely tricky but overall logical puzzles. It's nowhere as soul crushingly difficult as still there, so it made for a nice break. This game is relatively short, but it's fun, laid back, and doesn't overstay its welcome. I wasn't sure what to expect when booting up Path of Giants because puzzle games are such a rich tapestry, but I was extremely engaged by what I found, and I'm pretty grateful that I didn't need to give my brain a rest between every single level as well. I love Still There a little bit more, but there's absolutely a place in my heart for Path of Giants as well. Because I got a big heart. <laughs> So overall, what do I think about this bundle? It's pretty good. You know, it's not as good as last month, I will say, but uh, it, it gets a pass for me. You know, I think I'll go for it. I count five games that I'd consider good, eight games that I consider decent, and one which is just poor. So in order from my favorite to least favorite, Indivisible, absolutely great RPG platformer, Children of Morda, RPG roguelite, you just, you just can't go wrong with the RPG genre in general. 
I'm weak for it. <laughs> I'll be the first to tell you. Uh, Overcooked 2 takes in third place. If you don't have somebody that's willing to play co-op with you, it's, it's ranking drops dramatically. But luckily, I was able to wrangle one of my kids in to play with me. Still There is in fourth place. I might be coming around on these point and clicks, guys. This was absolutely amazing. I really love bending my brain. It's not a brain teaser. It is an absolute brain buster, and I love it for that. Path of Giants, again, it's it's a puzzle game, but it's one that is built extremely well. You don't have any, like, weird inventory puzzles. The puzzles are all logical. You know, you can figure it out, and once you do figure it out, you're like, oh, I see why the solution is the way that it is. You know what I mean? Some puzzle games just make you poke around in the dark, and you'll never feel that with Path of Giants. Shining Resonance Refrain is at the top of the decent games in the sixth slot. Uh, I really do like it as a JRPG and a hack and slash, but just those quality of life changes. If they could have simply implemented a fast travel system or made the story a little bit less reliant on tropes and just lazy writing, then it could easily peak up into good. But as it is, I can only really give it decent. The seventh slot goes to Zwei, the Ilvard Insurrection, and right under that we have Zwei, the Argus Adventure. These are another pair of games that are right on the border of being good in my opinion, but I think their age and lack of quality of life and just the, the try-hard nature of some of the humor in the game really ended up turning me off, you know. I can see fans of old school RPGs enjoying it pretty well, but for me it, it just fell a little bit short of being good. But decent is still decent, isn't it? <laughs> in ninth place, I put Struggling. You know, as I said, not really a fun game, but it is a statement piece. Life is hard. This game is hard. How much are you willing to push in order to succeed to reach your goals? I don't know if it's just the place that my life is at right now, but the game really did end up speaking to me. You know what I mean? Which might seem a little bit weird, but that's the great thing about video games. They <laughs> affect everybody differently. And for me, struggling, while I think a lot of people would classify it as a poor game, I, I stuck it as decent just because of the way that I connected with it, personally. In 10th place, I put Tabletop Playground. Well, it is a good game, as I said, it's better than Tabletop Simulator. This is not the sort of game that I sit down to play regularly. If I want to play a board game, I will actually play a board game. However, if you are away from family or friends, unable to play a board game, it is a decent substitute, but it still feels a little bit <laughs> wonkier than just, you know, using your actual hands. If you've got people in the same house that are willing to play a board game, I don't know why you would ever pick this game over the actual experience. It's decent, it allows some creativity to flow, but we've all been here before, it's been done. It's not changing the whole idea up, it's just adding some quality of life stuff, which doesn't impress me too much. I am appreciative, but <laughs> I'm not gonna sing its praises from the rooftop or anything. One Step from Eden is in 11th place for me. I really do like these deck building types, but it just it's just too fast. I don't understand how they expect you to memorize what every single card does and play it so quickly. I mean, maybe I'm just getting old. <laughs> that could be a fact too. But I never got into the Mega Man Battle Network games, and if I'm going to play a deck builder like Slay the Spire, it's so I can make my move, relax, go fart around, pause it easily, but that's just not the case with One Step from Eden, so it didn't click, personally. I think a lot of people will enjoy it, but for me, unfortunately, it is in the bottom third of these games. Uh, finally, rounding out the decent tier, almost slipping into the poor tier, I've got Frog Detective 1 and 2 in 12th and 13th place. Again, it's just far too simple. Some people seem to enjoy it ironically, you know, just for the memes. It's not a really fun game to sit down and play. It just, it's kind of something to do. And I ended up ripping into Little Misfortune last month for exactly the same reason. And this game is honestly probably more egregious than Little Misfortune. The one exception being that, you know, the art style and the humor and stuff match up. And it kind of seems like the developer had some idea of what they wanted to build. At the end of the day, it's, it's not an impressive game by any means, but... I've also played games that are a hell of a lot worse, so this one gets into the very bottom of the decent category, just scrapes by, by just how uh, unoffensive it is. But again, I don't think that the majority of uh, gamers out there will, will get much enjoyment, if any, out of this. 
Finally, in the poor tier, I've got the beast inside. I think it had a lot of good ideas, but I hated the execution. It tried so hard to just jump scare, jump scare, every corner, jump scare, go run from something, jump scare. Like, okay, I get it, all right? Just let me in experience this game, you know what I mean? Explore the environment, uh, investigate paranormal activities. Oh, but instead, jump scare, jump scare. Like, I, I can't ever let the atmosphere build and just enjoy where I'm at, you know what I mean? The game is constantly trying to, to frazzle me, fray my nerves for seemingly no reason at all, and that does not a good game make. It's better than Five Nights at Freddy's, you know? It's deeper, you've got a lot of places to explore, but you'll also get jump scared about every 10 feet, so <laughs> just <laughs> be prepared for that. Some people might like it, you know, fans of the horror genre. I've given some horror games a pass just because of the atmosphere, but this game simply doesn't allow the atmosphere to build, and it makes for something that's really not enjoyable on any level for me to play, and so it is the only game in this bundle that sits in the poor tier. A decently put together bundle with a, a nice mix of games, and honestly, I think if you have some friends and some co-op partners, then you will get the full use out of this bundle. If you don't have people to play with, then... <laughs> The usefulness of this bundle goes down considerably, but even for just Children of Morta and Indivisible, I'd say mm, it's kind of worth it. However, if you've already got those two games, you have nobody to play co-op with, then basically the entire bundle falls into the decent tier slash poor tier. Oh yeah, Still There is pretty nice as well. Oh, Path of Giants is pretty nice as well. But yeah. <laughs> Definitely not as strong as last month, but, but still decent, you know? I give it a pass, as I said. But anyways, friends, that's going to be about it for me for this bundle banter. I hope that I was able to help you in some way, enlighten you about some of these games, perhaps. I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video. Check out my links in the description, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Facebook, PayPal. I'll probably come up with some more uh, links later. <laughs> Throw them down there just to make the link swarm take up half the description. Anywho, I'd also like to thank my patrons very, very much, helping me to live the dream, Damon Darkstar, Lady Nix, Crimson Albedo, Dot Nathan, Robert Waits, Just Austin, and Barlos Bugo. I'm getting so good at just rattling those off. <laughs> thank you guys so, so much for all of your support, all of your patience as I, uh, as I work through the games and, and try and put the video together. I'm definitely not as fast as I was. I blame still there for a lot of that. <laughs> But anyways, once again, I hope you enjoyed. Get at me in the Discord. Get at me on Twitter. We'll talk a little bit more about it there if you should like. And I hope that you guys will join me for the next one. So until then, friends, bye-bye.